you know, I've been talking about Wealthy Kingdom since my last event and we had a prayer. There's like 200 people there. And I told them the vision for this and they were just like blown away. The Wealthy Way was the precursor to all of this. Entrepreneurs, business people, this is the right way to live. We've got you covered on the money side. We can help you get healthy and different things. There's still this missing element of faith and community that just doesn't exist in this space. Oh, what's going on, guys? It's Ryan. Welcome to another episode of the Wealthy Way Podcast, where our goal is to help you not go broke trying to get rich. And today, one of the aspects of wealth, as we all know, is worship. And this has to do with anything with faith and spirit. And I got to tell you, I haven't done many podcasts about faith, and I figured this was a good time to jump right into it because a lot of things are happening. We are launching something very big in the Christian space. And as I've gotten ready to launch this thing, I've gotten lots of pushback and different, uh, I guess, criticisms is the best way I would say it. And so I want to talk to you guys about some of those criticisms and things and ways that I plan to address it and ways that I'm kind of like managing faith now that I'm just so much more out there with my Christian faith on social media, because even though there's a ton of great feedback and a lot of people are inspired that I'm being more bold, there's also other things that now that I'm doing this, I need to be a lot more cautious of, I guess. And so I want to talk about all those. I want to talk about money and faith because money is very taboo with basically any faith, um, especially the Christian faith. And uh, I want to talk about just my morning post and and what we plan to do. So well, jumping right into it, um, many of you guys know we have our education programs and they're all uh, wealthy branded. So we have Wealthy Investor, which is for real estate. We have Wealthy Creator for content creation. We're launching Wealthy Business um, for just all entrepreneurs to become better business people. Um, but one we are launching at the end of April, maybe early May, is called Wealthy Kingdom, which is for Christian um, entrepreneurs slash business people. And I'm most excited about this because it's going to be like, I mean, it truly is my passion project and it's what I feel God calling me to do. Uh, it is something that is a massive need in the space. You know, when you think about starting any business, right, you've got to be passionate about it. And so obviously with this, I'm very passionate about it, but there's also this, uh, thing called a blue ocean, and with blue oceans, it's where you don't really have competition. It's just this wide open space that is there if anyone's able to kind of take it. And I feel like this space is a massive blue ocean. Um, and that comes from a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. Uh, a red ocean would be where there's blood in the water and everyone's fighting over the same thing, right? So it's like a, a typical red ocean, I'll just say like house flipping. Okay, everybody's fighting um, for similar deals and different things with house flipping. Like, unless you're really differentiating yourself, you're kind of doing the same thing as everyone else. And so, you know, it's a red ocean. Doesn't mean you can't make money in red oceans. You know, most businesses are in red oceans, but the best businesses are able to create and go into blue oceans where there's not really any competition and therefore it's just wide open for, for um, kind of the taking. And the way that you get into a blue ocean is by, you know, creating something that really doesn't exist and is just such, you know, insane value and such a great need. And it's just something people haven't really thought of before. And so with Wealthy Kingdom, I look at it from a purpose standpoint of it's what I want to do regardless of it being a blue ocean. And also the fact that it is a blue ocean makes it really exciting you know, basically what I plan to do is create this community for Christian entrepreneurs. And it's going to be the cheapest thing we have. Like, you know, our other programs cost thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, in, in some of the programs. And this one's literally going to be a hundred bucks a month or less. And it's mainly because I just want as many people to get into it as possible. And, um, you know, really the revenue so that we can just scale and grow and, you know, run operations and do the things we got to do. And, um, you know, I plan to donate a ton of the profits to a lot of the different causes that, um, you know, our members and myself are going to be, uh, passionate about. But anyways, the reason it's exciting and the reason it even started was because I had been posting about my Bible studies for the last like five years. So 
if you follow me on Instagram and, and specifically Instagram stories, um, every Wednesday I've had a Bible study for the last five years at my office. And so I post about it and, uh, people have seen it and I've gotten so many messages like, Hey, you know, can we be a part of this? I don't have anything like this where I'm at. And my response has always been no. And it's not like a mean no or anything. It's just like, no, like it, it's an in-person thing. It's not something for Zoom. There's like very personal things that are talked about that can't be shared with the world. So no, you can't be in it. But hopefully one day you can find one like it. And that was my hope. I'm like, man, you know, get get plugged in at, uh, you know, whatever church you're going to. And then it, it goes to the question of a lot of these people reaching out to me aren't even going to church right now, right? They're like seeking faith. And it just kind of became apparent to me of like, wow, what we have is very unique. You know, there's not, I don't know of any other entrepreneurs who are doing this. And there's a lot of people hungry for it to at least test it out and see, you know, where they can grow in faith. And, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I need to like create these Bible studies nationwide because if we're able to bring all these entrepreneurs and business people together and help them grow as believers, um, that's going to make a huge impact for the kingdom, number one. Number two, it's going to make a huge impact in all these business people and entrepreneurs' lives, number two, because they're now going to have you know, fellowship with like-minded people, right? Like, it's one thing when you're a part of your church and, you know, you're you're serving and you're going, that's amazing, but you usually don't have a lot of people that you relate with or vibe with. And so to be around other like-minded people in the business and entrepreneurship space uh, who are also believers is a really big deal. I know it's helped me tremendously. Some of my favorite people in the world that I collaborate with who are really big are believers, and that's why we are so like close. So I think it's going to be great on that. But then the third and probably the most biggest important thing is that I think we are going to help equip them to become so much more impactful at their church and in their community, right? Like if we're able to show them that, hey, you know, you can do way more than you think. Um, you can serve more for your church and your community. You can give more to your church and your community. Like these things are really important because I think a lot of entrepreneurs and business people, they, they might hear it from the church itself and they're like, oh, well, of course the pastor's saying that. Why would I do that? You know, they, uh, whatever. Right. And I think when you hear it from another business person who has no agenda, right. Um, it's like, I, I'm not getting your tithe. I don't want it. You know, go give to your church. Uh, it's going to change things. And I think it's going to really impact churches across the country if we can really influence these guys, because at the end of the day, right, like these entrepreneurs and business people are likely the leaders in their communities. They run the businesses. And so if I can have a huge impact on them, we're going to change communities, right? Um, so that's, that's part of our just overall mission, you know, in building leaders and enriching communities at, you know, my company, Pineda Company. And so if we can do that through Wealthy Kingdom, it, it just is going to change a lot of things. But let me tell you this, okay? What I'm attempting to do is going to be very difficult for lots of reasons. And really, I mean, this podcast is about faith. And like I'm just transparently sharing with you the things that I am going through faith-wise and the pushback I am getting faith-wise um, as, I, as I go about doing this. Um, just so you can understand and, you know, realize kind of, I guess, where I'm coming from and why I'm doing things the way I'm doing them. But, um, you know, one of the things that's going to be really difficult is launching nationwide um, Bible studies, right? Because, like, this is huge, you know, or, or life groups, whatever you want to call them. Like, that's a whole nother thing, too, just, like, what to call them um, because, if some people hear one word, some church hears one word, you know, they might get defensive. So whatever, I'll talk about that later. Anyways, um, the, the hard part is going to be launching these things nationwide. So like the group, the group stuff that we do is going to be simple because we already know how to run digital communities and education, right? So we'll, we'll have it just like we have all of our other education where it's like, hey, we're going to have um, weekly calls, right? Where there's going to be lessons, um, 
based around business and entrepreneurship and faith. So it's going to be very applicable to the people in that community. Uh, you know, we're going to have private groups where you're going to be able to network and build relationships with all these people across the country. Um, we're going to set up nationwide events, right? Like we're very good at holding events. We're going to continue to hold amazing events where there's going to be amazing worship. You know, we're going to bring in, you know, pastors and athletes and celebrities and like, you know, people who are really building up the kingdom. And uh, so the events are going to be great. We're going to set up mission trips and um, other ways for people to serve. And so like that part, honestly, is the easy part. And so I already know we can do that very quickly. But it, setting up the local Bible studies or life groups is going to be the hard part because it's going to rely on us bringing in, you know, all these people nationwide and then identifying who are the leaders and, you know, are these, you know, people of high character who are um, disciplined and who are going to, you know, stay accountable to keeping this group together and really be just great leaders um, for that city, right? And so I've already got a bunch of people lined up who, like, I've had relationships with for years. So, I'm, like, those people are good. But, man, if, if I want to go start these everywhere and equip all these people, it's going to be a big undertaking. And I'm, I'm not scared of it. I'm just like, wow, this might be one of the harder things I ever have to do because uh, it's going to take a lot of work. And, like, these people have no financial incentive, right? It's all volunteer-based, right? And so... Um, you know, you got to really get somebody who's got a heart for God to go out and do this. So that that's going to be um, a difficult part. Another part which I never considered being di- so. Let me let me just take a step back. You know, with any business, the first thing that you have to do is like think, hey, how am I going to market this thing and get people in the door? Right. Um, I don't think I'm have a problem marketing it. I think just me putting out content, us running digital ads and everything the way that we've always done. I don't think we'll have a problem getting people in the door personally. Um, But where I think we end up having a problem is the perception of what we're doing. And this never occurred to me until I started talking to other pastors. And and, and even like they they all brought up different things, not like um, in a bad way, like these are all people who are friends, but like in a... Um, hey, we want to like make sure you understand what you're going to be up against um, so that you can properly be prepared for it. And um, that way you can like get ahead of it. <laughs> and so what never occurred to me was that what I was doing in Bible study was very unique. So like our Bible study uh, Wednesdays, like it's it's not led by any church. I mean, it's just it's led by me and, you know, all of the people at Bible study like they all go to different churches. I mean, obviously some go to the same, but, uh, you know, they all go to different churches, they have different denominations. Um, you know, but the common theme among all of us is that we have a love for Jesus and we have a love for business, right? Like that's the theme and it's great. And though we may differ on certain, um, I, I would call them minor theological beliefs. You know, we keep the core things, the core things. And that's always been my motto. Right. Like I've over the years now, I've seen it all with just growing up in just different kinds of churches, traveling the world when I was playing baseball and attending different churches. I've been to mega churches. I've been to small churches. I've been to Baptist churches, Pentecostal churches. Like I've, I've seen it all. And so, you know, I used to think one way in my youth. And now I think a different way today where it's like, man, you know, really what we need is unity. It's not like this whole denominational system and everything else is the problem. Um, you know, fighting amongst each other as believers is the problem. And so how do I bring about unity um, to all these people? Well, <laughs> we've done it in Bible study really well. And I know that we can do it and replicate what we've done with the right people and the right systems. Um, and obviously with the spirit guiding us, but one thing that I never considered was churches seeing us as a threat. And that got brought up to me by multiple pastors. And I was like, really? Like, why would they think we're a threat? Like, you know, the, they're thinking that we're going to steal their people out of church and they're not going to go to church anymore or whatever. It's like, 
you can't even tithe to me or donate. Like this is a business. This ain't a church or a nonprofit. And, um, you know, my, my whole thing is I want to empower believers and these business people to be better leaders and servants in their church. Um, and I want them to go to church and be more generous and do the things like that's the whole point of it. And I just didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind that there could be this other perception that, Hey, like you're, you're starting something that's competition to the church and any pastor who thinks like that there's competition isn't going to like it. I was like, wow, that kind of shocked me, but that is what it is, right? I'm not going to like sit here and say like it sucks or, you know, it's wrong or whatever. Like it's just, it is what it is, right? That's how my attitude has always been that I don't cry over anything or get offended. It's like, all right. I mean, if that is an issue, how do we address it? How do we make the churches, you know, understand we're here to help them, you know, and be, you know, what's called a parachurch, um, be, meaning like we are here to support the church, not replace the church. And so um, I think doing things like this, right, where I'm like transparently sharing what it is I'm doing and why, I think will help. I think that as people join Wealthy Kingdom, it will help um, when they talk to their pastors and let them know that like, hey, this is a good thing. Um, so yeah, I think all those things will help, but like, I guess from my side, one thing I'm really praying about and discerning is kind of like the marketing side of this so that uh, we aren't like seen as a comp as competition, but as collaborative and as like, Hey, we're here to, to support you guys. So that's something I'm discerning. And even like what I was talking about earlier, where, you know, the word Bible study is typically used with a church, like a church runs a Bible study and a curriculum and everything else. And so it's like backed by whatever that specific church is. Whereas, you know, to, to do something that's unaffiliated with any church is very rare. And, you know, really, I guess what I've been running is more like a life group, um, meaning it's like, man, we share life together and yeah, we, we study the Bible. Sometimes we do other kinds of studies, you know, on different books and things and faith. And so regardless, I don't really care what it's called. I'm all I care about is like how it's perceived and what's going to give us the optimal result we're looking for, which is to, you know, make the kingdom better. So that that's something that I've been thinking about and um, kind of discerning and struggling with uh, as I grow this thing and, and build it out. Um, you know, the other thing I've been thinking about is just like this, this whole different thing of money and faith, because, you know, on, on my side, I'm coming from, I guess, the secular world. Okay. So, you know, I built my businesses as just normal businesses. They're not, um, built in the Christian space. And it's interesting because, a lot of Christian built things end up coming to the secular side to grow, I guess. To give an example, Dave Ramsey, okay? So I got, <laughs> I don't want to say like I got nothing but love. Um, I think he's helping a certain set of people that are very different than the people I'm trying to help, right? Um, but like whatever he's doing, like I know it's good overall. But you know, he started in the Christian space and that was his business and career where it's like, hey, he went to churches, um, showed the churches that Financial Peace University would be an asset to their members and the church itself. And um, that's why they welcomed him with open arms and, you know, his business and financial peace spread like wildfire. And then he ended up going secular after the fact and kind of like spread this message um, everywhere. To, to everyone, not just the churches. Once again, I got no problem with that. I think it's cool. Um, I think I, I haven't studied John Maxwell's career, but I know, you know, obviously he's faith-based, but now he's also um, in the secular space a lot. I haven't really seen too many people do what I'm basically doing where you're going from the secular space, which is where I've always been. All my businesses are just normal everyday businesses. Um, and then now going into the faith, faith space. And, um, 
I don't know why that is, but I just haven't really seen it done before. And maybe because people, I don't know, don't see the calling for it, or maybe they don't have the skill for it, or maybe they don't think it's, I don't know, financially worth it. I don't know, right? But I feel the calling for it. And I also just see like, the massive opportunity, like I said, with the blue ocean, I think that we can have thousands of thousands of people in wealthy kingdom and it's going to be an amazing thing. And I know that, uh, if we do things with the right intention and integrity, the money will take care of itself. Like, I don't have to worry about that. So, and, and the other part is too, like I make enough money from all the other things I do in the secular space where this is not my main source of income. You know, actually, it's no source of income right now because it doesn't exist yet. We're getting ready to launch. It's actually negative right now because <laughs> of all the things that we're doing building. But um, I think that's another thing where it's like, uh, I, I guess sometimes people, I don't know, like have a weird thing is like if you make money from faith, you know, it makes you, I don't know, weird or wrong or something, right? So I think by me having made my money and everything else in the secular world, I don't have to deal with that issue that maybe other people would. So that's a good thing, I guess. But um, there is going to be this thing that I'm going to have to deal with, and that is going into the Christian space, and I'm going to get a lot of judgment from other Christians and pastors and other things who you know, are going to see me talk about a Rolex or the Porsche, or something else, right? And they're going to take it the wrong way. Um, and, you know, for right or wrong, right? I know for a fact, having this Rolex has actually made me way more money than it's cost me, because I understand how to use it for marketing, okay? Um, and I honestly wouldn't care if I sold it tomorrow. It literally, I don't, it doesn't matter to me, truthfully. Um, but regardless of me saying that, unless you truly know me, you can have your own opinion about it, and uh, it is what it is. And so there's going to be a lot of people who are going to look at this as, you know, like, whatever. Why is this guy leading this group? He's, like, all about materialism. That's I already understand that that will happen, um, especially because a lot of the things I do on the secular side are teaching people how to make money, right, and, and build wealth. So, heck, the thing is called Wealthy Kingdom. So I understand where that perception is going to come from, from a select few people. And look, I'm not going to get everyone. So if those people are bent out of shape and they don't want to join, whatever, doesn't, it's not going to hurt my feelings, right? There's going to be a lot of people who understand who are with the cause and they're going to join. And those are the people that I'm excited for, right? And then hopefully the other people come around at some point and see the true intent of what we're doing. And honestly too, um, just it being new, like I don't expect people to, just like go right off. Like, I think that over time you'll see the fruit that it bears and that will be what brings more and more of these maybe skeptics to the table. So like I, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing a lot with that because, you know, there's a Bible verse that talks a lot about, um, you know, how when you're a leader, you are judged at a higher standard. And I've kind of already known that for a long time. You know, as a guy who owns lots of companies, I'm going to be judged at a higher standard as a believer because guess what? If I'm over here cussing my employees out and treating them like crap and then over here talking about like, yeah, yeah, I love God, I love Jesus. It's like, no, bro, that ain't it. You know, you cannot do that. You're judged at a much higher standard as a, as a, as a leader. You know, when somebody who's not a leader, you know, uh, <laughs> says one thing and acts another way, it's not like a big deal. Like they're not influencing people. They're not, um, you know, making that big of an impact. But I know if I slip up, right, and I start acting a fool, it has massive waves of impact across my company, you know, not even mentioning social media, right? Can you imagine, you know, I don't know. I just, I go get into some kind of scandal, right? That's uh, something, right? I don't know. I have some crazy scandal. It's like, man, dude, like, did you hear like Ryan was like out there doing drugs and he got charged with like all this 
drugs and I don't know, whatever, right? Like that would be a whole thing and that would cause a lot of repercussions over everything. So it's like, I've already realized um, I'm going to be held to a much higher standard regardless. But this like takes it to an even another level of, hey, now you got to like actually be very, very like um, aware of the things you're doing and how they're perceived because it's not only now just a reflection on you and your family, but it's a reflection on God and the kingdom, like to a higher degree. And so that's something I've been thinking a lot about as we launch this, because it's going to open up the door for a lot more criticism. And I mean, the Bible talks about that. Look, you know, let your actions be so strong that, uh, it just becomes hard to criticize you because your actions are just, you know, so fruitful. And so that's really all I can do is just kind of let my actions speak for themselves and um, just be aware of the things that I know are going to come up. But um, like another thing that's been crossing my mind with this is like the whole church denomination thing, right? Because like there's, there's like strong feelings. That's why denominations exist, right? Um, and there's not going to be a denomination for wealthy kingdom, you know? We're going to allow all kinds of Christians to join. And even people who are seeking to follow Jesus, like they're going to be able to join. And um, there's going to be people who don't like that. You know, there's going to be people who are like, oh, dude, well, you know, do you believe uh, in this thing? Uh, Like what's your stance on spiritual gifts and speaking in tongues? What's your stance on um, how often you do communion? What's your stance on like, guys? Bro, if that's tripping you up and, you know, you really need to be in the group if that's tripping you up because you need to see other perspectives. But also, too, like like I said, I think my my whole thing is like unity. How do we bring, you know, more people together and let the main things be the main things? You know, if you want to debate over the small things, that's great. But um, at the end of the day, if that separates you and makes you think, you know, like it, and it causes strife and drama, that's where it becomes the problem. Um, and I've seen that a lot, unfortunately. And, you know, that's just something I'm going to have to navigate towards, you know. But one thing I can say is I'm, I'm sharing transparently with you guys what feedback and things I have received on, like, the, the harder side. On the good side, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, I've been talking about Wealthy Kingdom since my last event. And we had, we had a prayer at my last event. Um, there was like 200 people there. And I told them the vision for this. And they were just like blown away. They could not, they're like, can we just start now? And I'm like, well, you know, I got to build this out. It's going to take some time, but like we're ready. And um, so like that feedback was amazing. You know, I've been more active on Instagram and everything with um, literally like every morning I'm posting myself reading my Bible at five five in the morning. And like, that's just what I've always done, but I never posted about it, you know? So I started posting about it and I would just, I've just been kind of writing a daily devotional of what it is like I was learning or reflecting on that morning. And the feedback from that has been amazing. People are like, dude, like keep sharing these posts. They are changing my life and the way I think, um, you know, with the wealthy way 60, our, our challenge, I've had so many people tell me that, you know, this 10 minutes of prayer that's a requirement and the challenge has changed their life, you know? So I'm super encouraged by everything that uh, I'm doing, right? With the feedback we're getting from being more bold in my faith, like even doing this podcast, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of great feedback and I'm going to get others who, you know, aren't so happy with it, and that's fine. But um, like I feel super encouraged to do all these things. But I, I just want to share with you guys like, uh, what I've been going through as I've been building out Wealthy Kingdom and how it's affecting my own faith and how, you know, I, I think about doing content now, um, you know, how I think about prioritizing my time and energy and everything else. Because, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm probably, uh, well, I already know I am. I'm more passionate about doing this than I am anything else, you know, and all the other things are amazing. You know, I love our events and coaching. I love flipping houses. I love, you know, true books. I love, you know, Pineda media and and editing and filming. And I love interviewing guests on the podcast, but I already know wealthy kingdom will for me 
be the thing that I am most passionate about. And it probably won't really be close. So, you know, I'm really like trying to be very, I'm trying to use very good discernment in everything that we do with it. Um, so that, you know, it has the most amount of success that it can possibly have. You know, the other thing I'm thinking about too, as well is, you know, as, as we grow and everything else, looking at the next verticals within it, right? Like every business I've ever started usually ends up as like, it starts as one thing and then we end up seeing like the verticals that are needed. Right. And so I already know people are going to, you know, be looking for other organizations to donate to. Right. So it's like, man, how can we, you know, get all of these other parachurches in local areas? Like I had a pastor who was asking me about that. Like, Hey, you know, this is my vision. I want to have like a list of parachurches in every single city, you know, but I just, you know, it, it'll take time to do it. And I'm like, well, if I had wealthy kingdom already, and we already had all these people nationwide, we could go pretty much aggregate all the data of legit parachurches um, in each city, just from our community. Like we could aggregate it so fast. And then it made me think, I was like, wow, we have something like nothing else. Had. Like it's this united group of all these diverse people in different churches and everything else who are all hustlers and like high level people who want to make change and things happen. And it's like, they're willing to do things. They're willing to give and donate to different causes and other things. I'm like, dude, imagine the power of this community. What can happen, right? We can go do initiatives like that. We can go serve. We can go give to really big causes and different things. We can go plant churches. We can go, you know, support missionaries and all this stuff. Like the possibilities are endless with what develops from it. And so it gets me excited thinking about it. It gets me excited that I'm at this point in my career where I can put my full energy into this and you know, not have it be like a financial burden or a time burden or like worried about my, you know, uh, percep like people's perception of me. Like I, I just don't, none of that matters now. And so it makes it the perfect time to do this. So yeah, you know, by the time this podcast release, Wealthy Kingdom probably won't be ready yet, you know, but when it is, you know, it'll be at wealthykingdom.com and you know, I'm super excited about it, but like, this is the thing that God has been stirring on my heart for the last, honestly, like year and a half. Um, and it, it started with the wealthy way, you know, the wealthy way was like the precursor to all of this of like, Hey guys, entrepreneurs, business people, this is the right way to live, right? It's not just about money. It's about faith. It's about health. It's about being a good husband. It's a good about, you know, all these things. Money is definitely important, but you know, the wealthy way was like my first foundation to all of this. And then to now say, well, look, okay, we've got you covered on the money side. We can help you make money. Okay. We've got you covered on, you know, this side, we can help you get healthy and different things. Right. But there's still this missing element of faith and community that just doesn't exist in this space. And so I think that this is a blue ocean, um, that can cause, a lot of massive ripple effects to many nations. Um, and so I'm really excited about it. And I just want to share with you guys my heart on what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, uh, you know, if you're a believer, I want to see you in it. And, you know, if you think you've got what it takes to be a leader, that's going to be my biggest need and my biggest ask. You know, I'm looking for leaders nationwide to, to help us um, just, you know, create massive impact for the community for other churches in your community. And, um, it's going to be fun. So anyways, it's a very different podcast, but you know, hopefully it inspired you and gave you some insight into some things that you probably have never heard me talk about and, uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.